Hey guys, it's Chris with Dev Coffee, and what we're going to be doing today is covering Feathers JS 2.0. So let's get flying. <laughs> God, I'm so lonely. So you might be asking yourselves, what is Feathers JS? Well, Feathers JS is a service-oriented, minimalist, real-time web framework that basically puts real-time in the forefront rather than as an afterthought. And what does that all mean? So it means a lot of things. It means you can build robust real-time apps very quickly. And not only that, these applications are really, really condensed because they're light as a feather. Another great thing you can do with it is you can have APIs built very fast. Not only that, but it has authentication so you can get interfacing with a React Native application or an Ionic application for mobile development super easily. It's customizable. You can go ahead and take existing tools that you're already used to and mix and match them. If you choose to use the tools that Feathers.js provides for you, you can do that or you can switch them out. That would include frameworks like React, Ember, Angular, Angular 2.0. And probably one of the best features in my opinion because a lot of a lot of these real-time frameworks have been lacking ORM support for databases so you could have something like a Postgres or a MySQL back backend instead of the classic MongoDB backend which is huge and if you guys want to go ahead and click on the link right there there's a full article written by the author himself so go ahead and click on that and read as much information as you want but Right now, we're gonna get started and actually start coding. All right, guys, to get started, there's three things you need to do. And the first thing you need to do is to go to nodejs.org and download the latest version of Node. Pretty simple, it shouldn't take too long. Second thing is install Yeoman. What Yeoman is is a really nice scaffolding tool for generating boilerplates and different parts of your application really fast. I use this in most of my projects and I know you'll find it useful if you're not already using it and for us to get up and running with feathers really fast we're gonna need it so just download this or just go ahead and type this npm command or you know in your terminal or command prompt should be pretty simple the next thing I do is go to feathersjs.com and you'll see down here it has the you know different commands you have to do so you're going to do npm install dash g yo generator feathers and that's going to install your yeoman generator for the feathers feathers js you know and we're going to be doing this right now so i'm going to act like i just downloaded this and after you guys download this we're going to make a directory and what we're going to be making today is a real time chat application you can go to their documentation and follow along in more detail, but I'm just gonna be doing a kind of a higher level one that just kind of throws it right at you guys. So go ahead and type in feathers chat. So make directory feathers chat and go ahead and CD into it. And now that we're inside the directory, all we're gonna type in is yo feathers and enter. And now it will give us a menu to start naming different attributes and features of our application. So hit enter, feathers-chat is what we'll call it. The description is this is a chat application. And then it asks you uh, what type of API we're making. So we're gonna be using REST and we're also gonna be using uh, real-time socket IO. So just hit enter. Um, our core's configuration, enable it for all domains. And our database we're gonna be using is NEDB. So you just hit enter and our, or our authentication is just gonna be local. Enter. And right now you'll see that it's gonna be loading and going through all of the files and installing of our, all of our node modules. So this is gonna take a little while. I'll be right back. Okay guys, it looks like our application is nice and installed. All we have to do now is type in npm start. What this will do is it'll run our application on localhost 3030. Let's go to that. Localhost 3030. 
And just like that, we have our Feathers application up and running on a server. Now, it's not really doing anything cool, so let's change that. Go ahead and open up your text editor of choice. I choose Sublime. Uh, all you'd have to do is just, you know, you can open it in Notepad if you wanted to, but I'm just choosing Sublime because I'm, I'm pretty used to it. If you look here, it's scaffolded out all of these different files for us. I'll walk you kind of through the gist of it. So starting here is default.json, which we give it a host name, a port. I could change the port to whatever I wanted to. So if I wanted to change it to that, it'll be one through three, seven, but let's keep it at 3030. And just a little bit of information about your application. And then here's your production JSON. So it'll be different whenever you put it into production. It's pretty basic. Our data file is empty because we don't have anything for that. And here are all of our node modules that it installed when we, whenever we generated the application. Then we have our public, which public will hold most of our HTML pages and most of our different views. Here you can see that this has all of our HTML that's scaffolded out already here. I could change this to something like yay, save it, then refresh it and it'll reflect right there. Perfect. And this is where the meat of our application is, the source file. Here we'll have things like hooks, middleware, and services. I'll get into more of what hooks in middleware are, but services are very, very important. Like we said earlier in the video, Feathers is service oriented, so most of our program is be, be through these services. And we'll notice we already have something scaffolded out, which is authentication and the user services. Let's create our new service already. Now what we can do is, they have this command through Yeoman. If you go back to your terminal, you'll type in yo feathers colon service. Um, this command basically will scaffold out a service and similar to how we created our app, it'll give us a menu of different things to define our service. Our first service we wanna create is probably messages since we're gonna be doing chat and a chat application. So go ahead and type in message. And this will just this will be connected to a database, and we'll be using NEDB. And no, a user does not have to be authenticated for this to run. If you chose yes, you would you know you'd have to do a little bit more configuration. But for right now, we don't care if the user is authenticated or not. If you go over here, localhost, and type in dash messages, that's not found. That's because we have to restart our server. That is right. So npm start. Just go ahead and discontinue by control C and then rerun your server. And if we refresh, we'll see that we have our JSON data right here. Nothing in it right now, but we can change that pretty easily with one curl command. So with no configuration at all, I can go over here and I got a curl message copied right here. If you guys wanna just pause the video and copy this down inside of your terminal. All this is doing is it's sending a post request to our local host 3030-messages and we're adding this data text and text is equal to hello feathers. So what we'll expect is that we're making a post call to our messages endpoint and it will reflect, it will reflect right here. So let's hit enter and we'll see we're returned with this property and value we just made. And you'll also notice that we have a unique ID that generated automatically. And we refresh here and our data is in our endpoint perfectly. So guys, this is actually really cool. Now what Feathers did was it made an API for us automatically. We didn't have to define any of the Git code or any of the create code. It just does it, it does it all on its own, which is great. So we don't spend that much time doing that. We can get up and running really fast. Now, something else that I discovered that is super cool that you don't have to worry about at all is we can write query string parameters right here. So we'll see this ID is this and we'll just go ahead and copy it and we'll say underscore ID which is the field and we'll just paste this ID and hit enter and it'll return this this uh, object back if I did some random ID that didn't exist it wouldn't return anything back whenever we get a couple more things into the database it'll it'll look a lot nicer but we can do the same thing with text so we go over here to messages 
and copied our text exactly and do question mark underscore text or not underscore text just text enter it'll return our uh, our data right there super cool we'd have to write any logic for it excellent continuing forward we're going to want to make our application real time because you know we're not going to want to be sending our messages through this api and looking at the json data let's go back to our html file so our index html which is inside of our public folder and we'll delete this style we don't need that anymore and we'll get rid of this main we don't need any of this HTML. Delete it. And we'll save. Go back to our home route. And we'll notice that nothing's there. Pull up your developer tools in Chrome or Firefox or whatever you're using. And I'll pull this up a little bit. We're going to start writing some code over here inside of our body. You're going to need two different scripts. And you guys can find those in the Feathers documentation. I'm, that's where exactly where I'm copying it. So if you just go down in the show notes, you'll see the link to that. Paste it. And we have two scripts. The first script is our Feathers JS script. The second one is our JS script for socket.io to give our application web sockets and give it that real time feel. We'll go down here and we'll make our own custom script tag. So type is type is equal to text.javascript. Open this up. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to invoke our socket. Then we're gonna create our application for feathers. And then we're gonna link those two together to say, hey, feathers use socket IO. Far socket we'll call our variable socket and io this is a function that is given to us by socket.io the next line is going to be var app is equal to feathers and invoke that that's given to us by our feathers script that we just loaded up there now we're going to do app dot configure configure and then we're going to do feathers i believe it's uh yeah feathers dot socket io and then in there, we're going to pass our socket. And good. So now we just told our application to use the socket we just opened up and invoked. In there, we have access to our service that we just created. So we'll have, mass or we'll have access to our messages service. Let's make a variable called messages and set it equal to app.service. And inside here, we're going to put messages. So now that we just defined our messages variable, what we're gonna have to do is we can have access to our messages service. And one property on there is on, and we'll pass in a string. We're gonna say on created, fire off a function. And inside here, we're gonna have access to the message that was just created. So we'll pass into our parameters message. And we can do any number of things, but for right now, we'll just message um, your message was sent. And then we'll do message.text. Pretty simple, pretty simple. And we'll send our message. We'll go ahead and create our message. Something that I think would be really cool is we can make a on click. So basically when we click a button, it'll send a message. So we'll call this send message. And we'll get this right in here. So when we create our message, we're going to send text hello from WebSocket. In order to get this working, we're going to need a button. We'll make a button, send message. This message will have an on click function which we'll pass in our send message and uh, maybe give this a little margin so it's not up in the corner. And when we refresh, we'll see our send message button. It doesn't look pretty, I know. We'll fix that later on in this tutorial. 
if we click this send message, what we'll expect to happen is for this message on create to fire off this callback function in console.log our message. So let's click it and see. There we go. We'll see that this console.logged out our message. Hello from WebSocket. And if we go over here to localhost 3030 das messages, we'll see that our message was added to our database. Super simple. And you can see how fast we can get a message app going. So something we could do here is we'll make an input. And this input uh, type will just be text. We'll put a placeholder on it that just says message content. And the ID will just be um, message. Now we can grab this input, and instead of passing in our own string, we can just grab what's inside the input. So we'll do a var message value is equal to document dot get element by ID. And again, this is just standard uh, JavaScript. Get element by ID, and that is message. And we'll get the value from there. And instead of passing in the string, we'll just type in message value. Let's test that out. We'll type in hello from input and send the message. Boom. That's sent. It took the value from the input and posted it. And like always, we'll check that out. And we have it. So guys, you might be asking yourselves, all right, we just posted to the database, that's cool, and we had it respond with a function callback. Where is the magic in that? Well, again, like we said, Feathers.js is real time. That's the whole purpose of it. So let's demonstrate that. We'll go up here and make a div, and we'll give it the ID of message list. Now that we have this div, we can target it, and we can append our messages to it. Where would we do that? on our create callback right here. We'll get that message list, document.getElementById, similar to what we did down there, and do message list. And now what we're gonna do is use the property inner HTML. We're gonna do plus equal to, so just add on to whatever's inside of the HTML, message.text. We're not just gonna to wanna to throw the text in there, we'll throw a tag on it. So we'll do h4 and add it to that string, h4. So now this will generate a h4 tag with our contents of the message text. Cool, right? We'll see here and refresh it. Is this working? Boom, it's working very easily. But where's the real time in that? Let's open up another window, localhost 3030. Go over here and open up our console as well, just to kind of demonstrate. So if I send a message in this window right here, what would you expect to happen? Let's try it. Will it just appear inside of this window or will it appear in both the windows? It's a real question. Send it. And we'll see it through the function on both windows, therefore making it real time. You know, I could put something over here and it'll send over there and I can say something like, hey, how's it going? And you can see we're having a chat between two screens. Even cooler, I can go over here and get our curl function or our curl uh, command that we can run in the terminal. And you'll see that we just curled hello again right there. And I can do this as many times as I want. So now we have the server and the client and client to client talking to each other in real time very easily. This is where the magic of Feathers.js is. And I hope you guys enjoyed everything that we went through so far. Um, in future tutorials, we're gonna be going over user authentication, uh, data manipulation, and building a front end, choosing our front end if we want it in Angular 2 or React or just plain jQuery. We'll be exploring that very soon. So 
Thanks for tuning in, guys. Subscribe, like, and comment. And until later, Dev Coffee out.